This is Cicero's In Catilinum Oratio Prima, Chapter 9, Part 2. We're continuing the speech, the apostrophe of the patria, the homeland, the home country, who acts like a worried mother or parent, sad, angry at Catiline for existing, for Catilining, and angry at Cicero for not doing something about Catiline, Catilining. So the Patria continues her speech, and it ends at the bottom with conflagratorum. And so Cicero has the Patria say, Quid tandem te impedit, mosne maiorum, at per saipe etiam privati in hac republica perniciosos cives morte multarut. An leges, quae de civium Romanorum supplicio rogatae sunt, At nunquam in hac urbe, qui a republica defecerunt, civium jura tenuerunt. An invidium posteritatis times? Praeclaram vero populo Romano refers gratiam, qui te, hominem per te cognitum, nulla commendatione maiorum, tam mature ad summum imperium, per omnes honorum gradus extulit, si propter invidiam, aut alicuius periculimetum, salutatem civium tuorum neg legis. Sed, si quis es invidia metus, Non est vehementius severitatis ac fortitudinis invidia, quam inertiae ac nequitiae per timiscendenda. An, cum bellulo vastabitur Italia, vexabuntur urbes, tecta ardebunt tum te non existimas invidiae ingendio conflagraturum? All right, we are really cooking with gas. Now this is pod racing. Quid tandem te impedit? Uh, what tandem, once again exasperated, oh, at last, finally, finally, what impedes you, te impedit? What's stopping you? What's hindering you? What is keeping you from killing this man? The answer is the law. Musne maiorum. Is it, and we, what we're going to do is we're going to start asking these questions, and then we're going to start answering them. Most name maiorum. Uh, first question starts off with ne. Every subsequent question will be introduced by on, and will be answered by ot. So is it this? But don't be worried about that because of reasons. Most name maiorum. What impedes you? Most name my autumn. Is it the custom of the ancestors? Is it the precedence of the ancestors? Remember that um, the ans the Romans had ancestors, of course, as their models for the proper way to act. And the Romans had no written constitution of their government. They instead relied upon a constant ob observance of what their forebears would have thought to be proper and correct behavior. So that's the es essence of uh, most modus masculine. So we've got most Naimorum. Is it the precedent of the ancestors? Would the ancestors have looked down upon this, not liked what you're doing? Ot, but, ot is a souped up said, but with one T, but per saipe. Per saipe is somewhat equivalent to saipissime, but very often, etiam, but even ver but very often at the privati, even private and private citizens, I mean citizens not elected to office, even private citizens in hoc republica, in this republic, in this government, perniciosos quives morte multare, uh, multarunt for syncopation for multaverunt, uh, they even private citizens have punished. Uh, dangerous, perniciosos, pernicious, dangerous, deadly citizens, morte, with death in this republic. Um, not really, no, not quite. I mean, besides the, the precedents mentioned by Cicero himself in this very speech in the opening, um, 
And anyway, those incidents that Cicero himself mentions, they were also evoke public outcry and ill will. Um, there's really no incident in Roman history in which everyone was okay with a private citizen extrajudiciously murdering somebody else. That's something that the Romans tended to really look down and frown upon. Um, by the way, if this is something that is so righteous and so good, and you know, very often even private citizens have just straight up murdered people they thought were dangerous to the government and everything was fine. If that were true, then what is this invidia, this ill will that Cicero fears so much that has kept him from acting? Mm. On leges, uh, new question, is it the laws? You know, is it the most name maiorum, the custom of the end, the precedent of the ancestors? Well, no, it's not really that. Okay, on leges, is it the law? Leges, uh, lex legis feminine law, in, in the plural typically mean leges, means the law, like the way we Americans talk of, like, stop in the name of the law, capital L, law. So this is, is it the law, you know, the law which uh, de kiwiam Romanorum supplicio rogata sunt has been passed concerning the execution of Roman citizens, the punishment of Roman citizens. You know, the Romans have passed laws concerning uh, how, how it, you can legally execute a Roman citizen. Uh, most recently, at the time of this conspiracy, which occurred in 63 BC, we have the Lex Sempronia de Capite Kiwium, which is the Sempronian Law of Capital Punishment for Citizens, which was passed by, hey, you guessed it, Gaius Gracchus in 123 BC, before you know he was murdered in one of those precedents Cicero mentioned at the beginning of this very speech. Uh, the law held that no citizen could be scourged or put to death without allowing him his right to appeal to the people, the provocatio ad populum, or to escape via voluntary exile, which has sort of been the crux of this whole Catiline speech. So is it the law which uh, has been passed concerning the uh, the execution of Roman citizens? Yeah, actually, that is the thing that it keeps Cicero from acting. So let's hear what the, the patria, Cicero's imaginary witness, says how he should act. At numquam, but never, uh-oh, we're already on shaky ground, in hoc orbe, in this city, qui a republica defecero. Uh, classical Latin is kind of abstract noun deficient, or it's rather just altogether noun deficient. They don't have a lot of words for nouns. Latin tends to put all of its uh, heavy lifting into verbs, and that's what it's done here. So this relative clause, qui a republica defecerunt, those qui who have defecerunt defected from republica, from the state, from the commonweal, from the republic, uh, you can just translate as the English noun defector or even traitor. The Latin noun defector, with the agency suffix tor, doesn't appear until Tacitus. It's that late. So classical Latin, Cicero, pre-Tacitus, prefers uh, verbs and relative clauses instead of uh, abstract nouns. We've seen places in Caesar where uh, an indirect question can stand in for a noun in English. But never in this city have traitors, defectors from the state, tenuerunt kiwium jura, have they tenuera kept, retained, held on to their jura kiwium, their, their rights as citizens, their citizens' rights, their citizenship. And that is a, whoa, no, hold on, pump the brakes, kid, you've crossed the line. That, that is a step too far. This is Cicero's probably most egregious and troubling mistake in the whole speech, because j just how wrong he is. If you actually stopped and looked at what Roman law said at the time, this, this does not work. Uh, a Roman citizen can only lose citizenship if he joins a foreign power, under the belief that he has to give up his citizenship of his own accord. Citizenship is kiwitas is not something that can be taken from a Roman citizen, his kiwis use. You can't take that, strip someone of that. They have to voluntarily give that up. Even those charged with treason were to receive a fair trial, and the right to appeal to the people, the provocatio ad populum, and a chance to flee in exilium prior to punishment. 
What Cicero is proposing here, that is executing citizens, that is Catiline without trial, is illegal. And it happens to be the exact course of action that he takes in the fourth Catalinarian oration, and that is the reason that he has to undergo voluntary exile in 58 BC. Because he does the very thing that he says he's not allowed to do. An invidium posteritatis timex. New question. Is it that you fear the ill will of posterity? You know, the very thing that causes him to go into voluntary exile in about five years? Yeah, that, that, that might be a thing. So yeah, you can see that he's, he's hammering out uh, these concerns and worries in real time in, as he's giving the speech. And we can also, you know, we know from hindsight that it is the thing that nails him uh, in the end. He does come back from exile, but it, it is kind of a, a mark upon his name. Or is it that you fear uh, the ill will of posterity? Preclaram vero. Um, vero it means but, and it's post-positive, so that you can pick an important emphatic word, put it first, and then have the vero stand after it. Uh, but famous, preclarum, famous, um, outstanding, uh, populo romano, dative, refers gratiam. Refers being the uh, second person singular, um, present tense of refero. Refero with gratiam, gratiam refere, means to, to render thanks. So, but uh, great thanks you would be rendering, uh, or outstanding thanks. Praeclarum gratiam. Praeclarum goes all the way with gratiam. See, praeclarum is the operative important word here, and we picked that out. We took it away from its noun gratiam, put it first, and had Wero frame it to make it important and stand out at the beginning. But you uh, are bearing, you are rendering uh, outstanding Outstanding, praeclarum, outstanding gratiam, thanks to the Roman people. And you can tell this, she's being sarcastic, or Cicero is making her be sarcastic here. Qui te, qui the relative, and the antecedent of qui is the populo romano, the Roman people who, te. Now I know we're used to seeing te, you, uh, referring to Catiline in the speech, but this is the the direct quotation, the oratio recta of the patria, of the homeland. And she is addressing uh, Marque Tulli Quidagis. Marcus Tullius, what are you doing? So this is Cicero, you. Second person singular is Cicero here. Who, you, uh, the direct object, hey, they did something to you. Hominem, uh, accusative, it's in a positive with te, so it modifies te. A man, a person, a homo, a dude. Per te cognitum, through you, through yourself, by yourself, uh, like English per, or the, the Latin per se, which we also have in English as per se, meaning by itself. It's per te, by yourself. Cognitum, known by yourself, a man known by your own means, per te, by your own means, by your own agency. Man lifted himself up by his own bootstraps. He was born in the log cabin that he himself built. Yeah, a man per te, cognitum, known by his own self, who gets, gets his business done and he does it by himself, needs no help. Nulla commendatione, by no commendation, no recommendation, no honor, rendered unto him maiorum of his ancestors, by his ancestors. Remember that Cicero is bringing up his, uh, his nobus homo, his new man, self-made man status <clears throat> because many patricians are elected to high office and they become statesmen merely because they have the family name they have the ancestral clout so these are the julians these are the like catiline the sergians uh, cicero does uh, not have this background he's technically um, he's a native of arpinum which is technically samnite territory so not technically a roman he moved to rome when he was a small child but he's kind of on the out, he's an outsider. And of course, this is something that Catiline will bring up uh, at the end of this speech um, about how he, Catiline, 
member of the most ancient, noble house of Sergius. How could he sit here and take all these insults from someone who isn't even really a Roman? So, of course, that would be the charge that leveled at Cicero all the time that, nah, you know, you're not even really a Roman, dude. You're just a nobus homo. You're a self-made man. Like, you know, whoop de do, great for you. Cicero would never have the name that other Romans around him uh, enjoyed. And that kind of left a left a mark on him. You can see he's he's rather indignant that he never quite gets to become part of the the club that he would like to. So no by no nulla there should be a macron over the a nulla commendatione by no commendation maiorum of his ancestors. A man known by his own means with no commendation of his ancestors, Tom Mature so early or here tom mature probably means like at just the right time tom mature at, at just the proper time ad sumum imperium to the highest uh imperium office power government uh, gover uh government office per omnes honorum gradus through all of the gradus the steps the grades of honors remember that the uh the roman cursus honorum the the honors races or the race course of honors it was the uh, stepladder of offices that you had to climb in order to get to become consul. So it'd be like being elected to, say, mayor or city council, and then you move up the, from the local government to the state government to the federal government. So then you would move on to, say, the House of you know, Government, state governor, and then the House of Representatives, then senator, and then you move on to place in the cabinet or move on to president or et cetera. So you would hit all of these offices and it would provide you the necessary training to do the next office. And it's remarkable that Cicero was elected consul for 63 BC. You know, that is his novus homo status. And this is why he's doing this, you know, we call it a humble brag. It's not quite, you know, humble about it, but it is, it is a remarkable achievement on his part. And here, he's not only bragging about himself, he is sort of thanking the Roman people, thanking the Roman people. He, He's thanking the Roman people for extulit, for extulit, raising him, te, that's the you, the qui, the Roman people who have raised te, you, a man known by your own agency with no commendation of your ancestors at the right time to the highest office through all the steps of honors. Uh, so the qui refers back to the Roman people. The Roman people have extulite, have lifted you up, Marcus Tullius. A man who, yeah, you did things per te, by yourself, through your own honors. No commendation of your ancestors. And Tom Mature, at just the right time, you were ad sumum imperium, elected to consul, the highest office in the land, Tom Mature. Uh, there's an age limit, just like there is with our own presidency in Cicero. Pretty much at the uh, earliest age that he was uh, allowed, was elected to the consulship. Si propter invidiam aut alicuius periculi metum. Uh, if si propter goes with the accusative invidiam, it will also go with the accusative metum. And alicuius periculi goes with metum. So if on account of the ill will, out or the metum, the fear, alicuius periculi, of some danger. So if on account of ill will or fear of some danger, salutam civium tuorum negleges, you neglect, you ignore the salutam, the well-being, the health, the safety, the salvation, civium tuorum, of your fellow citizens. So a rather long sentence. Uh, this is the answer to the question, on invidium posteritatis times. But do you fear the ill will of posterity? But you are rendering outstanding thanks to the Roman citizen, to, to the Roman people, a people who have lifted you up, you a man, by, known by your own agency, with no commendation of your ancestors, to the highest office at the earliest possible time, through all the steps of honors. If you neglect the salvation of your citizens on account of the ill will or the 
danger or the fear of some danger. So if you uh, if you neglect the safety or salvation of the citizens because of fear of ill will, what sort of thanks would you be rendering to the Roman people, a people who have done favors for you? They've elected you to this office through your own age, you know, by your own agency, through all the steps of honors. They brought you to this point. You are their leader. What sort of thanks are you rendering to them for this honor they bestowed upon you if you neglect their safety and well-being? Said, but, si quis est in vidiae metus, si quis, remember, after si nisi numen ne, all the alis drop away. You should have si aliquis, but all the alis drop away, so you just have si quis. Quis links up with metus, so if any metus, est in vidia, if there is any fear of ill will. Non est vehementius severitatis ac fortitudinis in vidiae. Quam, uh, we have the vehementius comparative. So it is natural to see a quam uh, comparative with quam than. Enertiae ac nequitiae pertimescenda. Uh, per <coughs> pertimescenda. Uh, links up with est, so we have known est, per timiscenda. Uh, we have uh, per timiscenda est, passive periphrastic, showing obligation. Remember in Latin, passive periphrastic is always passive, what must be done. The agent, the one that must do the passive periphrastic, is in the dative. Uh, we do not have a dative of agent here, we don't need one. Uh, the subject of pertimescenda is the invidia. So non est vehementio sueritatis ac fortitudinis invidia. So invidia, ill will of sueritatis ac fortitudinis. Ill will of severity and strength, fortitude. Non est pertimescenda, must not be feared vehementius more violently, more aggressively, quam, then, and then supply invidia again, invidia, in ill will of inertiae ac nequitiae. For comparis, we're comparing severitatis ac fortitudinis with inertiae nequitiae. So, if there, but if there is any fear of ill will, ill will of Ill will uh, born from severity and strength must not be feared. I hear that passive must not be feared, per timiscenda. Wehermentius more aggressively, more violently than ill will uh, born of inertiae ac nequitiae, born of idleness and negligence, inaction and negligence. If you remember, back in uh, chapter two, part two, that those were the charges, those were the things that Cicero condemned not, condemned or accused himself. I can, I myself condemn myself of inertiae nequitiaeque, of, of inaction and negligence. So he's bringing it back here, coming full circle. On, last question. Cum bello vastabitor Italiae. I know that cum here is immediately followed by the ablative bello. This is actually cum when the tip off comes when you get the tum. Wexabuntur uh, urbes tecta arde bunt tum. There we go. When we have cum with tum, then we have temporal cum. So cum with the, the future indicative at that time when, and we mean the exact time when. Uh, this sentence usually sounds better if we start with. Uh, the main verb in the main clause because we have cum starts its own kind of uh, temporal clause so cum bello vastabitor italia vexabuntor orbes tecta ardebunt uh, that's its own cum clause then we have tum te non existimas uh, in vidia incendendio conflagratorum uh, existimas do you not think uh, remember because the on 
has jumped us into a question. Non existimos. Do not think that. Indirect statement. Subject. Te. That you. Conflagratorum. Will burn. Conflagration. Will burn in the incendio invidiae. Will burn in the fire. In the blaze of ill will. Tum links up with cum. At that time when Italia bello was abitor, when Italy is laid waste by war, vexavuntur orbes, when the cities are uh, will be oppressed, tecta ardebunt, when the remember roofs, the the roof of the house, the roofs here. This is synecdoche, part of the whole, part um, the roof for the whole house. So you can translate tecta as uh, domos here, homes, and the homes will burn. So do you not think that you will burn in the blaze of ill will at that time when Italy will be laid waste in war, the cities will be oppressed, and the homes will burn? And with this, the Patria speech ends.